Welcome to day number one. We're going to start today at the very top and we're going to be doing a little bit of a self massage. So what we're going to need for this is the ball. So I've got something that is kind of, it's, it's made for this sort of thing. It's a rubber ball. It's kind of like a lacrosse ball, but most people don't know the density of a lacrosse ball unless they've played it. So it's rubbery, it's a little soft, not quite as hard as something like a baseball, but you can use whatever it is that you've got. You just gotta make sure if you're using something really hard that you don't put too much pressure in. If you're using something soft, you can push a little harder. So what we're gonna be working on is the set of muscles at the base of our skull, at the very top of our neck. So where our head attaches to our neck, we have a group of muscles there called, called the suboccipital muscles. Those muscles are the ones that control a little bit of tilt and most of the rotation through our neck. And so a lot of the time when they get tight, they can cause things like neck pain and headaches and a general sense of tension. And a lot of the time it sends, uh, sends pain towards the front of our face and through our jaw and those sorts of things. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna use a ball to just kind of broadly massage those out and hopefully have a little bit more neck movement as a result. So all you've gotta do is take the ball, you gotta put it either on your neck or your head and essentially just roll it into the place exactly where your head and your neck meet. So you're not gonna wanna be right in the middle, you're gonna wanna be just to the side. So the spine itself will be in the middle right here. You're just gonna wanna put a ball right beside it and kinda roll up to the top or on the head and roll down here until they meet. We're gonna be right up in there. So all you've gotta do is take it in left hand, put it on the left side back part of your neck, roll up until it hits the base of your skull. And then from that position, we're just gonna press forward with our hand and just roll around a little bit. You can roll up or down. You can roll side to side. Most people find that if they roll side to side, that's where they're gonna get the right pressure in the right places. So most people side to side. Generally speaking, the thing that's gonna limit this movement and this exercise is gonna be our shoulder endurance. So you can uh, call it early if you feel like your arms are starting to burn and this is not a comfortable position for your shoulders, but we're gonna roll around side to side a little bit longer here. Feel free to explore a little bit by kind of drawing circles with that ball, rolling it around, just putting a little bit of pressure in there. Good, all right, let's switch sides. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Gonna take that ball, gonna, this time I'm gonna come right down from the top of my head, roll it down towards the back. You can see it hitting my mic, but it's gonna push straight into the back, right in there, and we're just gonna roll around and I'm gonna put a little bit more pressure on this side. Don't be surprised if it feels different side to side. A lot of people, these muscles operate differently side to side, hence a lot of people, they look one way a little more easily than they look another way. That's pretty normal. So feel free to kind of search out a little more of those tender spots. You don't wanna to go too far to the side and you don't wanna be right in the middle because it'll be tender because you're pushing on bone rather than pushing up underneath the base of your skull where those muscles are. Good. So, take a little breath. You can move your head around a little bit. There's a good chance you're gonna get a lot of clicking and clunking and popping noises in there. It's entirely normal. So, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna use the ball again, and we are going to use it on our elbows. So if you want, you can do, uh, you can do this movement on a tabletop. So if you're sitting beside a counter or a table, you can actually put the ball down on the table and you can move your arm on top of it. I'm gonna show you a way to do it just while we're kind of uh, free floating here, just sitting in a chair. And what we're gonna work on is two different groups of muscles in our forearm. So we've got, uh, and these, are the, these tend to be the muscles that uh, create the comfort in our elbow. So if you have elbow pain, a lot of the time it's usually a result of these muscles. Not always, but usually we can help our joints feel a lot better just by working on these two sets. So one set of muscles is the set that pulls your wrist and your grip in and down, and it attaches to the bone on the inside of your elbow. So if you put your uh, forearm on your lap with your palm up, the inside, in through here, this is where a lot of these muscles are. So all we're going to do is we're going to take a ball, and we're going to put it right in the meatiest part of our forearm, right in through here, and we're going to roll around, and we're going to use our other arm to do it. I'd recommend that you use the kind of the heel of your hand, the very palm of your hand to push in. If you're trying to push in with your fingers, you're just gonna fatigue quite a bit. So you wanna usually have the ball pushed right in through here, and that's what you're gonna use to kind of roll the ball around on the inside of your elbow. So you wanna start gentle, because there are some nerves in there. You're not gonna do any damage, but you might do something that feels like hitting yourself on the funny bone if you push too hard. But we're just gonna roll around on the inside of our forearm and through here. For most people, that should feel 
pretty good. And you can kind of explore a little bit, see if there's any spaces that feel like they're really tight, and you need a little bit of extra work. Good, so when you're done that, we're gonna do the same, exact same thing on the other side. We're just gonna come towards the inside of our elbow, use the kind of palm and heel of our hand, and we're gonna be rolling around in there. Most people are gonna have one side that's a little more tender than the other. A lot of people, it's in their dominant arm, but not necessarily. So just keep rolling around in there. So for me, I'm right-handed, that's my dominant arm. My left one is usually the tighter one. So I don't get overly tight in these areas on the right. If you want, you can actually push in and twist the ball, and it's gonna kind of torque on the skin a little bit as well. That's entirely fine. Unless you have skin that you're worried about causing a rip or a bruise, you're welcome to torque a little bit in there as well. But feel free to use it just to rub around in there. So a really good ball to use for these things is one that is a little bit grippy, that's not gonna slip. So hence the reason one of these more rubberized balls is usually a good idea. Okay, we're gonna switch back to the first arm and we're gonna do the same thing, only we're gonna do it on the other side. So rather than having our palm facing up, we are gonna switch and we're gonna put our hand across to the other lap and we're gonna use the outside of our elbow here. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna roll in through here. There's a big chunk, so from here if you make a fist and lift your knuckles up towards the ceiling. There's a big chunk of muscle in through here. That's generally the area that we're gonna work on. So you can put your hand here, that chunk of muscle right in through there, right up by the elbow. So we can go side to side if we want, or we can go up and down the forearm, it's up to you. But we're just gonna spend a little bit of time using the ball to kind of massage those areas. And if you have forearm hair like I do, I apologize, you might pull a little bit of hair using this one. Good, so let's switch sides, take the other hand, put it straight across here, and you got a big chunk of muscle. And these are the extensor muscles of your forearm. And again, we're just gonna get in there, do some rolling around. So a lot of people will find that their forearms are gonna feel more relaxed after we do this than they usually do. And if anything, they might feel a little bit weak, but they should feel pretty good. It'll just make them feel soft compared to usual. This is something that's really good to do as well after you spend some time doing some, some gardening or anything that requires a lot of grip power or carrying, just purely because it'll help to relax the muscles afterwards. Good. All right, so we're done with the arms for now. Uh, make sure you keep the ball nearby because we're gonna use it again at a certain point later today. For our next exercise, we are gonna need our band. So it doesn't matter if it's a tube or if it's a flat band, um, and it doesn't really matter if it has handles. If you, pretty well no matter what you've got, you should be able to use it for this exercise. So. I've got a flat band with no handles. What we're gonna do is get towards the front of our chair. We're gonna have one leg bent and we're gonna straighten the other leg. Then we're gonna take the band and we're gonna loop it underneath the arch of our foot and straighten our leg entirely out in front of us. So by the time it's out in the front of our foot, what we're gonna do is a rowing type of exercise. And this is for our upper back. A lot of people get pretty tense between the shoulder blades and in their upper back towards the base of their neck. So we're gonna work on those muscles just to help them out and to make sure they're strong enough to hold us in the positions that we want. So by the time you get here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull absolutely everything back in our upper limb. So we're gonna pull our hands, our elbows, our shoulders, and our shoulder blades all back. So it's gonna look something like this. We're gonna pull everything back, which is just gonna make you kinda of stick your chest up into a proud position, okay? So it doesn't matter which leg it's on. Uh, you can do one leg and then we'll do a second set on the other leg, or you can do them both on the same one. It's entirely up to you. So from this position, when you're holding on, doesn't matter how you hold on, you can loop your hands or you can just hold on tight. We're gonna do 10 reps, take a short break, then we're gonna do 10 more, okay? So get into a nice upright position, get the band around that foot, get nice and tall, and then pull for 10 reps, starting now. Good, we've got 10 reps there. And then let's take that band off. 
take a short little break. It's entirely up to you how long you want to take a break. But for most of us, we should be able to just take about 20 to 30 seconds and then start right into the other side. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get the band on one leg, straighten that leg out in front of us. If it feels awkward to do it on the second leg compared to the one that you just did, feel free to do it again on the first one. It's not going to make a huge difference which leg you do it for. It's more of an upper body exercise anyway. But if you can, try to switch legs just so we can even it out side to side. Okay, so getting at that same position, front of your chair, one leg bent, the other leg straight with the band around it. Hold on to the band wherever you feel is most comfortable for you. And we're going to do 10 more repetitions, starting now. Good, so we've got about 10 reps right there. And make sure you're careful when you go to take the band off, you don't want it to snap back at you. Okay, and we are done with the band for right now. The next thing that we're gonna do is gonna be a little bit of a stretch, and it's primarily for our spine. So we're gonna do a seated twist, like a big rotation. So one of the reasons that I like us using something like a kitchen chair that's nice and firm is it gives us something to hold on to and something to push so we can kind of wedge ourselves into place. So all we're gonna do for this is we're gonna try to keep our lower body aimed generally forward. It doesn't have to be perfect, and we're gonna try to twist our upper body off to the side. So if you don't have armrest or you don't have a back to your chair that you can hold on to, you can try to wedge yourself into place using your limbs. Um, but if you do have something you can hold on to to help you twist, I'd encourage you to use that just to give yourself some leverage. So for me, I've got a chair I can hold on to, but no armrests. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to twist over to one side. Usually, if you take your left hand, put it on the outside of your right thigh, and then pull, it's going to twist you off to the side. I've also got the ability to use my right hand and put it on the back of my chair and get me twisting all the way over. So all I'm trying to do is to use my limbs to kind of twist and pull me the whole way to one side. By the time you get there, I want you to make sure you can get upright and take some breaths. Being able to take some breaths in this position usually will make you feel some stretches in some odd places like around your rib cage or your abdominal muscles or your upper back. It's entirely normal. It's what we're doing this for. So what I want you to do is to try to use either the armrest or the back of the chair, preferably even your own legs, and kind of use them to twist yourself in place. And we're going to hang out there and do about three deep breaths. Now, you just want to slowly let yourself back out, because that's probably more of a twist than you typically get in the run of a day. So you want to make sure your body's okay with it by moving slowly. So take a little bit of time to shake things out. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to take my right hand, reach across to my left thigh, and I'm going to hold on to the back of my chair on this side, and we're going to pull so we get into a nice, big, upright twist. And then same thing, by the time we get to a comfortable position here, we're going to do three more breaths. Good. Once you're done those three, just slowly let yourself back out again. Good. Hopefully we got into a nice new range of motion you don't normally experience for your back. The last thing that we're going to do today, we're going to be standing up and we're going to be using our ball again, but we're going to be using it against a wall just so we can use it for some leverage. The last thing that we're going to do for today is we're going to be using the ball and we're going to be using it uh, in our upper back against the wall. So what we want to be doing is working on the area between our spine and our shoulder blades. So our shoulder blades run right up and down. We have a spine in the middle and the other shoulder blade that runs right up and down. We have this space in the middle and through here that's full of a lot of muscles that get pretty tight. They're postural muscles and the ones that move our shoulder blades. So we're going to work on those a little bit. The easiest way to get at this a lot of the time is just to take the ball and just roll it over until it's about here. Right? So I can get my shoulder pretty far over there, but even if you can only get to the point where you get here, all you've got to do is let the ball sit onto the wall and then very slowly kind of lean forward a little bit and let it fall into place. By the time it falls into place and it's behind me, you can then start to move around 
and roll on whatever muscles it is that you want. So a lot of people, what they're gonna find is they're gonna find some really tender spots and some spots that they feel almost nothing. So you don't wanna be hitting on bone necessarily. You're not gonna do any damage, um, but you wanna be working on muscles. That's the thing that's gonna respond the best to this. So for the most part, easiest thing to do, just take it, put it over top of your shoulder, pin it against the wall, and then go looking for those uh, little tender spots in the upper back. So you'll notice I've got my hands in front of me like that. That's just because it takes the shoulder blades and it moves them out a little bit. Just gives you a little more area that you have to work with to work on those muscles. So all you gotta do is start on one side, seek and destroy. We've got about 20 or 30 seconds just rolling around, finding those tight spots. The wall and the ball will be your friend. Good. So once we're done on one side, you can either take it and move it over manually like this, or you can just move yourself on the wall a little bit by rolling side to side and you'll get into the right spot. So you don't want to be putting too much pressure into these or it's going to make you sore, might even send some pain into other places in your body just from those big knots in your upper back. So you just want to be using a little bit of pressure to start with. And if you really like this exercise and this kind of self massage, you can do it on your own. You can do it on uh, any other time. So for now, just do 20 or 30 seconds on either side, kind of between the shoulder blades, find those spots that you feel like really need it. I'm gonna get carried away here and just keep going for a little while. Feels really good. Okay, so. The next thing that we're gonna do is very, very similar, only instead of it being right between our shoulder blades by our spine, we're actually gonna do just the back of our shoulders themselves, so the shoulder joints themselves. So for most people, if you take your arm and you kind of stretch it across the front, it's gonna be kind of the very point apex of your shoulder, not towards the front, but a little bit more towards the back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the ball again, pinned against the wall in that position, and we're just gonna keep our arm cradled across the front a little bit. You don't need to pull it up and stretch all the way across. We just wanna keep it kind of tucked in towards our side and a little bit towards the front. So you can place the ball on the wall at just below shoulder height is usually the easiest. And you can pin it in place with your shoulder and you can lean in and just roll around a little bit. A lot of people are gonna be really sensitive back there. So you wanna make sure that you're trying to let everything relax and go as slow as you can at the start and just kind of broadly cover a lot of your shoulder. And again, make sure that you start very slow. If you've had a rotator cuff injury before, especially one that's very irritable and easy to, easy to make angry, then it's very, very important that you start extremely light on this. But in the long run, it should help quite a bit. All right, I'm done on one side, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just gonna get it on the back side of the shoulder and roll around in there. Using a ball on the wall for self-massage is something that just, it takes a little bit of practice to figure out the technique and for the ball to not uh, drop and run across the room on you. So just feel free to practice this on your own. You can explore a little bit and find the places in your upper body that respond really well to it. It's a really good tool for you to have in your tool belt just to make your shoulders, your upper back, your neck, those kind of things all feel better. By the time you get used to it and you have a good spot on the wall and the right ball to do it with, it can become a, a real blessing for you and can be something you can use to help relieve some aches and pains all the time. Good, all right, and we are now done the other shoulder. So that's it, we are done for day number one. I look forward to seeing you on day number two.